Hello, and welcome to Me on Five, a show about Maine and its people. Uh, this year for Christmas, I decided to go to various parts in the state, take some pictures of houses that I thought had beautiful, beautiful decorations, uh, and also I uh, was able to see uh, the greatest gingerbread house I've ever seen in my life. And I've got a short video coming up about that. Uh, I've also got a, a, a video about uh, a Christmas tree that I saw. And over the course of my trip around the state, I was asking people various Christmas questions for prizes. Uh, amazingly enough, a lot of people didn't want to take the chance, but uh, some of them did. And I was asking them uh, some pretty interesting questions about Christmas. But now I have with me uh, the executive director of the station that I've been on for 20, 21 years now. His name is Tom Handel, uh, and he's the reason I'm here. Uh, we had lunch about 21 years ago. Tom, happy holidays. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, one of the things I want to uh, say, Tom, is I know this, things are difficult with COVID, and so things around the studio have changed, but surely you've got a Christmas story uh, that, that is one of your favorites in your life, right? and I'd like to hear that story. Yeah, sure. I have, I have, I have Christmas stories, but I, I also uh, want to say that uh, this is a great Christmas story, that you're coming on doing this show and your spirit, and uh, for all these 21 years or whatever <laughs> that you've been doing your show, you've added a lot of energy and vitality to what we do here. I have about, ne yeah. I've never known anybody to be so passionate and love so much <laughs> what you do when you come in here. It's well, really a joy to have you because you're just full of positive I'm like energy. Dracula. I'm like Dracula. I come into the studio and suddenly I wake up. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Aside what it is. Well, you bring a lot of energy to the place and I really you appreciate all, all, that you've, all, the, all that you've done here. It's really great. Well, thank you. You can yeah. say that to my children sitting up there. <laughs> uh -huh. Actually, these are decorations <laughs> that were left over by a prior roommate of mine. In oh, those really? Days. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but um, what, one of the things that I think is really... Uh, you know, great about Christmas and, and the whole thing about Santa Claus that's part of my story is that Santa Claus is real and we all embody him and we all do our best to do special things on Christmas to make Santa Claus come alive. And children, of course, respond to that to the most. Right. So when my three kids were little, we lived in Pownall where this station goes to Pownall, and, and um, it was in a, what used to be a new school. It was a lot of different buildings. It was a new school in the 60s, like uh, for high school or even right. grammar school. And there were all these weirdly shaped buildings in the 60s that had these different like levels. It was, it was uh, bought by a family and made a compound, but we were one family that they rented to. Right. And there was this U-shaped building that we lived in, and the long shape of the U on one end was where our, my, our children slept. And, they, and, and there was a, a roof over the uh, hallway and then a higher roof on top of their bedroom. And we were all the way at the other end of the bedroom. So I had this great idea that on Christmas morning, <laughs> with all the crisp presents on the tree, instead mm -hmm. of saying, I think Santa's come, what I would do is put, have my boots on, run up the ladder, go on top of their roof, climb on top of their roof, total, total snow covered, like, oh. like, like a foot of snow. <laughs> Tom, this sounds like a lawsuit, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I'd, get, I'd go, stomp on their roof and go, ho! Oh, ho, ho, Merry Christmas, ring the jingle bells, then run down, take my robe off, run into bed and wait, 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 yeah. nothing. So I said, Andrew, I guess maybe they didn't hear us. Okay, I'll go, I'll do it again. I put my boots on right about, ho, 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 none of that. run back into the bedroom, nothing. So finally I was like, what's going on with them? So I went down to the hallway. They were under their covers. They were shivering. And they says, tell them, is Santa gone yet? Is Santa gone yet? He was banging on the roof. I said, yeah, he's gone. Come out and get your presents. <laughs> we just called. We just called 911. Yeah. He's down in the county jail. And so I know that, that uh, poem, The Good Fellow, you know, that, yeah. that she, at the end of it says, The good shall, the bad shall fail. Yeah. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> I try to bring the Christmas spirit, but, you know, well, Tom, you do the best you can, right? Well, Tom, <laughs> the, the reason why I enjoy this story is because here I am, I'm, I'm up in various parts of the state, and I'm going up to people and saying, Listen, I'm an attorney from Portland, I have a TV show. Uh, I'd like to ask you a couple of Christmas questions uh, for a prize. Can you, you know, do? And it was, it was amazing the number of people that said, no, no thanks. And I want to go, what is it about my face uh, that thinks you, I, I'm about to scam you? But anyway. That happens all the time. It, when we go out in the street, people just say no. They don't, just don't want to get. Well, I, then, I, then I don't take it so personally. But Tom, I do have uh, a, 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 a couple of trivia questions for you. Oh, great. Uh, these I'm are Christmas questions. And, 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 and the prize is, is enough to buy you. Well, 
Well, not a large car, but a small car. Oh, good. Okay, so, I uh, drive small Tommy, cars. here's the question. You, uh, you know the song, We Three Kings of Orient Are? Okay. What part of the Orient were they from? <laughs> India. <laughs> Well, first of all, I asked a woman in the store that question, and she goes, well, I have no idea. Well, I don't know if there's any way to answer it, but I, guess I would have said Macedonia or whatever. Uh, who knows where they were from? Uh, but she said Bethlehem, and I said, close enough. Okay. What's the answer? Uh, I, I don't know the answer. Oh, well, there is a movie. You could see it on, um, on YouTube. Yeah. It's called... Jesus was a Buddhist monk. I hope I don't get, no, but right. it is, is a documentary saying that actually the three kings came to see him in Bethlehem because they heard a Rupeshe was born. And these were three were Buddhist monks that came from India and brought him back to India and trained him in Buddhism. And their theory in this documentary was that Jesus's philosophy yeah. uh, that he espouses Christianity right. is closer to uh, to Buddhism, Buddhism right. than it is to Judaism. Right. So that's and, just, it, it, and there is a place where they actually say that Jesus is buried in India. Okay, so we're going to get a bunch of calls on yeah, this. Yeah, that's, that's Thanks right. Thanks a lot, Tom. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> controversy here, but okay. you can here, see it on YouTube. Yeah, here comes question two. Okay. Uh, in my first, uh, in the show that I just taped, the Dairy Runlet show, we talked about my dear friend, Brenda Lee. And in this show, I'm going to talk about my dear friend, Bobby Rydell. Uh, who's, this would be my friend Bobby Rydell. This is what he looked like about uh, 60 years ago. <laughs> he doesn't look like that now. Oh, just uh, a makeup he might. But, uh, but he's still uh, very handsome man. He's 79 years old. Uh, and the show that I want to uh, ask you, the question I want to ask you is, Bobby Rydell did a, a cover a song that was very popular. The two songs that came out in 58 were uh, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee. Huge hit. And the other one was Jing, uh, Jingle Bell Rock. And Bobby Rydell did a version of that song, which I'm going to play when I close this show. But he did it with another famous singer from the 60s. And I'm going to give you the hint. This singer had the only number one hit to go to number one twice. The only singer in rock and roll history. And they did a song, Jingle Bell Rock, together. Do you want to guess uh, the name of that other artist? Dun Dun, 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 and then Funicello. Dun, dun, not, not bad. Not bad. Uh, Connie Francis. No, uh, not bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a male. Oh, it was a male. Okay, now I'm going to give you another hint. Uh, this man did uh, uh, songs about dances. Several different songs about dances. How about the pony? How about the huckleberry? I knew the Barbara Streisand one, by the yeah, way. Yeah, well, you so, got that yeah. one? Doesn't count. What's this one? Well, maybe Leslie will give me a hint over okay. there. Okay. No. This guy did the twist. Oh, Chubby Checkers? There you go. All oh, right. wow. Chubby Checkers sang. Huh? I mean, besides the twist, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> Chubby and Bobby uh, were pals. Uh, well, from Philadelphia. Twist, of course. Uh, there you go. Oh, uh, well, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're well, very welcome. Thank you. Merry uh, Christmas. So, anyway, so that's the, that's the, that's the, uh, the Bobby Rydell story. So, Tom, thanks for coming on board while we let you switch. I'm going to call somebody, folks. And the person I'm about to call uh, is indeed uh, the, um, uh, the publicist for Bobby Rydell and his uh, gal Friday. And I'm going to be calling her. Hopefully, she'll answer the phone. And here we go. Uh, this is Maria Novi down in uh, Pennsylvania as we speak. All right. Hopefully, we're calling here. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Is this Maria Novi, um, my dear friend, and Bobby Rydell's publicist, Gal Friday, and whatever else you want to call yourself? How you doing? <laughs> Uh, Maria, I'm so glad to have you with me. Uh, sitting right beside me is not Bobby Rydell, but his picture uh, <laughs> on a pillow that my niece gave me. And uh, uh, Maria, I just asked my uh, station director a trivia question. I'm going to see if you can guess it. Uh, Bobby Rydell did a Christmas song uh, with, uh, called Jingle Bell Rock, and he did it with another artist, a uh, very popular artist. Can you name the artist? Would it be someone who twists? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chubby Checker? Mr. Chubby Checker. 
Uh, well, yes, that's correct, Maria, and, and you win the big prize. Uh, by the way, Maria, I, I've been asking people questions. I got one more for you, if you can, if you can uh, try to guess this trivia question. Uh, we know that uh, the Christmas is celebrated on December 25th. What year? What year was Jesus born, Jesus Christ born? Do you know him? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I asked this question yesterday, and because I don't know, I don't know what the, I think the right answer is, is between 4 and 6 B.C., but my answer would have been zero. Oh, my, okay. Yeah. Okay, that uh, which I, I, I don't think that's the right answer, but anyway. So, Maria, what I want to ask you is, is, is yeah, I, I, yeah, what's, what's, what's Bobby doing for Christmas? What's my pal doing for Christmas? Well, he normally, his daughter Jennifer normally has um, the, the family over, and they have a very nice tradition. Jennifer picks a theme for Christmas, and they all need to come in the themed costumes. So in the past, there has been um, comic book character themes, um, elves. Right. Um, I got a couple of elves right, sitting right next to me, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, superheroes. Yeah. And um, this year's theme is flannel pajamas. Oh, I got but you. I, but I need to tell you, seeing Bobby Rydell dressed as Superman is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I can imagine that. Uh, I, uh, I have to tell you, one of my favorite uh, uh, moments was sitting, him, uh, sitting with him on the back of that cruise ship, and he's telling uh, stories, and he tells this story that he always tells the time about the, the, uh, the two old men uh, that uh, are talking about the having dreams. But uh, th that's kind of an R-rated uh, story, so I'll leave it for now. And, and Maria, what are you folks doing for Christmas? Um, pretty quiet. We normally go to um, Washington's Crossing Inn okay. uh, for brunch, um, and we normally see, they do a reenactment of okay. General Washington going across the Delaware, as he did on Christmas Day a number of years ago, um, and so we normally see if we can catch that and catch up with some old friends there, and um, yeah, pretty so, quiet. So they do a reenactment? Uh, he's standing on the, the, the front of the boat that with a picture we've all seen? Right. And they literally, Derry, go across the river. They, they go I across mean, the river, wow. They do, they do. And the Pennsylvania side is lined and the Jersey side is lined with people and the bridge is lined and they're all cheering, go get them, George. Now, um, uh, you know, of course, uh, we have, they have Bobby Rydell Boulevard there. He's, he's an icon of Philadelphia, very, right. very highly respected. Uh, he, he, uh, he loves the Eagles. Has he ever sung the national anthem at the Eagles game? I would guess he has, you right? Know, Right. He may have, yeah. I know he's done it at the Phillies game well, a number of years ago, yeah. Okay. I'm going to close with a, a connection moment with uh, Bobby Rydell. Uh, when he and I first met, this is how we became friends, we started talking about the military. Uh, and we were both in the Army Reserves, uh, and both of us were squad leaders. Uh, and the thing I remember is that my, uh, uh, as being uh, at the fort around Christmas time, it was a very depressing place to be. Uh, and yet, uh, one of the greatest things that I got out of the military was my friendship with Bobby Rydell. And the last wow. text that he sent to me two days ago, he signed it, Spec 4 Ritarelli, which of course is his, <laughs> is his real name. And Maria, I want to thank you, uh, just as I did Doug Romeiser in my last show, I want to thank you uh, for keeping my friendship alive with this wonderful man. Uh, by the way, he's uh, 79. He just said he had a birthday in April, right? Right. He'll be 80. Uh, in April 2022, yes. He'll be 80 in April 22 and still sells out venues where several thousand people will come and, and watch him sing. When's the last time you saw him perform, Maria? It was uh, recently, wasn't it? Um, August. In he, August. I, I was in Lancaster for the first show um, after COVID when he and um, Frankie Avalon and uh, Fabian did their Golden Boy show. Okay. So that's the last time I saw him, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, my final story for you in the audience is I was out in Las Vegas with Frankie Avalon at the South Point uh, uh, Casino uh, with my other friend, Eden Everly, son of Don Everly. And I went to Frankie and said, Frankie, uh, I just want to tell you, uh, Bobby Rydell says good luck. He goes, what do you mean? You know Bobby Rydell? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, you just heard from him? I go, yeah. Uh, he just texted me. He goes, Bobby Rydell just texted you. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, I was friends with Frankie Avalon. Maria, uh, happy holidays to you. Thanks for taking my call. 
Uh, hi to John and Carolyn and the family. And when you see my pal Bobby, uh, say, Derry did uh, Jingle Bell Rock on his show, but trust me, you don't want to see it, okay? <laughs> I'll let him know. Thank you, Derry. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. Uh, okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, uh, Maria Novi from Pennsylvania. Excuse me while I bend down and get my sheet here. And what I'd like to do now before I bring on my next guest uh, is to talk to you about some photos that I took uh, around the state of various homes uh, that had their lights on. Uh, the quality of the photographs is not what I would want, but at least uh, the message is clear. And the first one I want to show, uh, which is number one, uh, is a, f a photo actually of, of one of my neighbor's house. And they had the, the normal Christmas lights, but what I noticed was a Christmas tree uh, in, in the backyard. Not in the front yard, but in the backyard and you could not see it only just a little bit from the road, but they could obviously see it from the window, I suppose, of their living room. And so the second shot, uh, Dino, was also uh, of that Christmas tree. Uh, and I'm gonna make it my business every night now to go out and stand and look at that uh, lonely, it's not lonely, but it's sitting by itself uh, in their backyard. Uh, we're moving now to shot number three. And what I thought was uh, beautiful about this home uh, was just that it was all white lights, all white lights, and it just as you drove down the neighborhood and saw this show, uh, this uh, this house, you could not miss uh, how wonderful uh, it was. Um, and uh, the next one uh, I liked. Uh, now this is sh uh, sh uh, slide number four. Uh, this is a, a, a house where it had lights in every room. Obviously, a, a single candle light uh, in every room, and I just thought that was simple. Uh, but so well stated. Uh, and the next one is of a store that actually is in my neighborhood called the Fiddlehead uh, Gift Store, uh, right near the Cookie Jar in, in uh, South Portland. And as I drove by there, the first thing I thought was, oh, it's a little much, it's a little whatever. But then when I began to see how well they designed the, the symmetry of this, uh, of this uh, decoration, I was just so very, uh, very impressed. Um, so the next shot, which would be slide number six, uh, is actually, this is my backyard. These two giant trees, it took me about seven days, no, actually. <laughs> this is the park uh, in South Portland uh, that is right next to Portland Players and right across from Cumberland Farms. And I wanted to tell the joke that that was actually my backyard. Uh, but uh, shot number seven uh, is one of my favorites because that is the shot of my uh, favorite theater, uh, the Portland Players Theater in South Portland, and what looks like to have uh, the star, uh, the star of Bethlehem, shining on Portland Players, where it says on the marquee, "Happy Holidays." Well, actually, that star is a streetlight, but it sure looks like the uh, star of Bethlehem to me. And Dino, the last uh, slide that we're going to see here uh, is a picture, a uh, picture of a mailbox at the post office that it goes direct to Santa. And I just thought that was so cute that kids could come in there and, uh, and it makes a lot of sense because then they don't have to sort all the, <laughs> all the mail uh, that's addressed to Santa Claus uh, at the North Pole. Um, uh, Dino, if you could send in either uh, Warren or yourself to come in and sit down. Uh, and while you're doing that, I would like to uh, chat a little bit about uh, my friend Bobby Rydell, uh, whom I just texted. Uh, I met Bobby Rydell on the uh, Malt Shop Memories Cruise. And uh, when I was uh, uh, on that cruise, the last night there, I was introduced to him. Uh, we started talking about the Army, uh, and the next day he called me over, and uh, we became, uh, we, we became uh, uh, good friends uh, over the years. Uh, he was uh, pretty much a, a big draw card uh, on, that, uh, uh, on that ship, the Malt Shop Memories Cruise. Uh, and as uh, Maria just said in my interview, uh, he is uh, now uh, 79 years old, still performing with the Golden Boys of Bandstand, uh, which, by the way, I saw that show in 1985 here in Portland, Maine at the Merrill Auditorium. Frankie Avalon uh, and Bobby Rydell and Fabian, uh, they would have been in their 40s. I remember sitting in the audience. Uh, this, the show was just beginning. I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, that's, I think that's my uh, phone saying having trouble hearing me. Uh, and in any event, they, um, they performed in this uh, Golden Boys of Bandstand. And uh, what I noticed was 
uh, that the audience was sold out. And I thought to myself, this is really fantastic. Well, they were going to do that show for two or three years, but ladies and gentlemen, it is now uh, 2023, and those people uh, are still going strong, the golden boys of Bandstand. So Dino, I'm going to start with you, buddy. Uh, thank you so much for being the director. How many months you been on uh, now doing this? I have been uh, here at the Media Center working. I've been volunteering for years. I was on the board of directors for a little right, bit, right. but I've been working since uh, June of this well, year. And I didn't realize, Dino, that you have tremendous experience. Where, where is it? You, you, you were in Boston, WGBH, was it? WGBH. I was right. down in Boston from 1987. Yeah. Uh, where I started part-time, full-time in 89, until 2012. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was quite, quite, uh, quite a run. I'm very fortunate. It was a great place to work. And, and just recently, you had a famous person on this, at this studio. You had Al Franken. Uh, Al Franken was Al Franken. in at our new podcast studio. Yeah. We did a couple episodes for his national show. Yeah. Well, worldwide show. He's got a worldwide show. Oh, you know, yeah. Well, it's a podcast available everywhere around and the world. And why did he happen to choose to shoot it here? Uh, Al has got family, and uh, his wife was born in Portland. Really? And, uh, yep. Oh, my goodness. And they come and visit. And while he was here, I was thrilled that the media center was able to uh, oh, gee. chip well, in and help him continue to do his show while he was here. Well, I'm, I'm proud to be sitting on the same spot as Al Franken. So, so uh, Dino, you must have a Christmas story from the past that you're quite fond of. Can you tell us uh, that story? Well, I'll tell you, you know, Christmas uh, to me has always been about being with my family. Right. And like many families, mine has gone through its own ups and downs, its, uh, its own changes. And I feel so fortunate now because I've got uh, my, when my parents divorced going back almost three decades now. Uh, <clears throat> They both uh, uh, remarried wonderful, wonderful people. Good. And I feel so fortunate that I get to spend time during the holidays with, uh, with, with even more people than uh, I almost <laughs> feel sometimes more people than anyone should, could deserve. But it's a wonderful, wonderful gift. And my family here in Portland. Well, uh, let me celebrate the fact that my daughter, Nicole, uh, just moved to Maine uh, with her wife, R. Uh, and uh, uh, was shopping right now with my wife. And, and I've got to tell you something. Uh, one of the things about divorces is, believe it or not, sometimes families can grow in a positive way. It doesn't have to be negative. Uh, and uh, I, I have to say, during the Christmas season, folks, it's the time to let down, let down the, the, those, those neg negative feelings uh, and you move forward and, 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 and move into the new year. Uh, uh, Dino, I, I, I want to thank you profusely for, for what you've done for me and, and the studio, and especially these incredible decorations. That, you know, I was looking for a, a couple of ribbons, a couple of presents, but I got the, uh, you know, I got the whole thing here, and my two buddies, the elves, that look like a couple of kids I went to high school with. Uh, well, that, that's, <laughs> that's courtesy of the ever-resourceful Tom Handel. <laughs> right. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, Dino, I'm going to send you back into the studio uh, as I uh, discussed the videos that I did, uh, some of them which I tried to send to you. Hopefully you got, you got them. We're we'll take them. care of it. Yeah, okay. So, uh, folks, we'll say goodbye to Dino while he goes back in and tries to close this show. Thank you, Dino. Thank you, and, Derek. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things, that, uh, one of the videos that I did uh, up in uh, Rockland at the Simerset was I'm walking by and I saw this fantastic, uh, fantastic gingerbread house. I mean, something you could actually go walk inside this thing. And we're going to show that video as we close the show. And then the beautiful Christmas tree uh, in Rockland. I tried to send that. That didn't quite come across. But another beautiful Christmas tree at the Samoset, uh, one like I'd never seen before. It was all white and had these white owls all through it. And that was just a, a fun moment for me. But uh, uh, folks, I also uh, did these uh, trivia questions uh, with people. Uh, and uh, f uh, for prizes, and one of the gentlemen uh, that I did record, but it, uh, it didn't quite get sent to the station in time, his name is Christopher. I told him I watched the show. Uh, he was in a store. Nobody else wanted to do it, but he did. And I asked him the question, uh, what, year, uh, what year was Christ born? And he said, zero. And I said to him, uh, that, that is, uh, th that is uh, what I would consider to be the right answer. 
So Warren, uh, you can come over and sit in this chair for a second, just very briefly. I want to just, you can just hold the mic and, and speak uh, by holding it without putting it up there. I know you got your uh, headphones in there. And, and, and Warren, you're, you're, you're a volunteer at the station, right? Uh, I am a volunteer, but I also work here. I'm the social media coordinator. You're the social media coordinator. That's right. And I, 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 what's your accent, uh, Warren? What's this accent I hear? Oh, it's, a, it's part of a speech impediment I had as a kid. Really? Yes. Uh, and it, uh, it evolved <laughs> over the years. I still don't fully know what it is. But, but, but I it, live it, with it. it sounds like you're from Belgium or something. It does. <laughs> it's very weird. I, like, I mean, my mom Do is Do other people spin. ask you that question? Oh, people ask me that question all the time. What's I, the accent, right? Yeah, and I don't know what to tell them. I'm like, <laughs> Well, well, my I, parents spoke English. I mean, I, well, I have to say, uh, you know, I have an accent. By the way, my Maine accent is among the worst you could have in the state of Maine. And for anybody, wherever I go, anybody, they'll go, "What? What the heck is that accent?" So, so Warren, uh, the good news for you, buddy, is is uh, I've got uh, I got some some trivia questions and, and a prize. Oh, right. and, and I'm gonna look up here. So, I'm gonna ask you uh, a, 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 some, a, a couple of, a, a Christmas questions. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, in uh, the Christmas story, uh, they, uh, they're going to Bethlehem. Uh, you all right? One minute left? <laughs> they got one minute left in the show? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Okay. <laughs> so uh, with one minute left, I wanted to ask you, uh, when they were going to Bethlehem, wh where was the first place they went to try to find a room? Oh, they went to... Uh was it a hotel? Yes, and what was the name of the hotel? I don't know the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Warren, <laughs> I would I want to ask that question. Warren, congratulations. Thanks for working at the station. Thank you. Looks like we're getting ready to wrap this thing up, ladies and gentlemen. Happy holidays from me on five. Uh, and I wanted to play uh, Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Rydell, and I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, hey, Siri. Uh, play Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Rydell. I think it's coming up. Yeah, one sec. I Jingle want it now. Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Rydell and Chubby Checker now playing. Here we go. That's it. No, I don't hear it. <laughs> jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle Bell sign and Jingle Bell ring. The wind and blowing a bushel of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell twist. That's Chubby Chucker, a dance you wouldn't know. <laughs> so this is one of the most unique trees I've ever seen, a Christmas tree. These are all owls seeing this tree from these like adult owls, like the baby owls, and they look so real. Whack! <laughs> anyway, this is one of my favorite trees on this Christmas trip. We are in front of what the biggest gingerbread house I've ever seen. And at first when I saw this, I couldn't believe it's real gingerbread, but it is. Everything in this gingerbread house is real. Uh, this is at the service at Hotel in Rockland. It's got 290 gingerbread tiles, 90 pounds of icing, 10 pounds of candy, two sugar glass windows, and 60 plus hours. So this, I say, is the greatest gingerbread house I've ever seen in my 75 years on the face of this earth. <laughs>